everyone, welcome back to Touch the Fire Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today for my Candle Day Haul and Review Part 3 of the Candle Day Online Exclusives, Candle Day Launches, and Insta Vault Collections. You can check out my Part 1, which is the Merry Mashups Candle Day Haul and Review, Part 2, which is my Holiday Favorites Candle Day Haul and Review, and now we're getting into the third and final haul with this mixture of eight candles. But first, if you're new to Touch Fire Twice, welcome. My mission here is to share my love and passion for fine home fragrance as an enthusiast, an educator, a reviewer, to inspire you to increase your own fragrance knowledge and understanding, ultimately enhancing the scent memories that you create. If you want to learn more about what I do, why I do it, how I do it, you can check out my website at touchthefiretwice.com. But for now, let's dig right into the haul and review. So I'm going to go through, talk about them, give a little bit of history on some of them, because this is really a mix of, in some ways, returning favorites for me, because though they maybe coming back as their original form. They may also be coming back with slightly different names, maybe a repackage with a twist, as it was once referred to as, but a lot of these are favorites of mine from over the years. So let's dig in first with one of my old time faves, that is Wine Cellar. So this one has kind of a storied history uh, where originally this scent came out in what was referred to as a prestige collection. It was a test collection, 2014. It was kind of biting off the style of Lofco's home collection where Lofco, if you see my reviews for Lofco, they have a very specific packaging with kind of this like black ribbon over the box and their naming mechanism for their home collection is office, kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, terrace, Bath & Body Works then launched and tested the Prestige collection that looked kind of similar to that, had kind of scent stories based on rooms in the home. They had Ski Den, Mountainside Suite, Great Room, Winter Terrace, and Wine Cellar, which was referred to as Mulled Wine and Spice. I believe it was likely, if not the same scent that was later turned into Wine Cellar, very, very similar. However, that collection pretty much failed. They were really expensive. It was a new thing they were testing. It was interesting. The boxes they used, they didn't have a lid. It was kind of like a thick metal band just around the top of the candle glass. So interesting, a little bit of a, again, a, a, a bite from a, another brand, but they were going for something, it didn't work. Then they brought out the Intrigue and Opulence collection. I believe there may have been two versions of that. One of them was these kind of large vessels, kind of almost looks like the Veluspa ones, where it's a kind of a fat vessel with a smaller opening on the top and a metal lid that just kind of sits on top without having kind of a gasket or seal. It had like a little metal hang tag. They were, I don't know, 30 or $40, back when the candles were like 19, 50, $20. So it was definitely testing something that was supposed to be higher and more exclusive, but I don't think that the actual formulations of the wax or the fragrance oils were anything different than the standard candles. So didn't really make much of an impact. They had some scents in there. Then I believe it went wide as kind of the Intrigue and Opulence collection in your traditional three wick jars. Still trying to get that opulence look to them. Again, a little bit Mediterranean, Moroccan, spice market kind of colors and art direction. Pretty nice. The scents were okay. When it came out in wide, they had cardamom and suede, Baltic black pearl, sparkling amber, topaz waters. Of course, mahogany teakwood, they had to throw that in there as something that would fit in that was very mainstream, and smoked berries and incense. Now, smoked berries and incense had slightly different notes, but very, very similar to the wine cellar mulled wine from that prestige collection. And if not the same scent, maybe repackaged with a twist of what it used to be referred to back in the day. In 2015, they had the Cork and Vine collection, which is a really cohesive late summer into early fall collection. More unique, quite honestly, than they do nowadays when they just kind of throw something out there that may or may not be transitional into sort of an early fall. Now they just give you all fall. By early August, you're hunting jack-o'-lanterns and, and everything Halloween at Bath & Body Works. But it was this really nice transitional collection. It had sun-drenched vineyard, Sonoma Spice Citrus, Citron Cedarwood, Sparkling Pear Riesling, Harvest Gathering, Napa Valley Sunset, Black Cherry Merlot, and Wine Cellar. Some of those you've heard of before and they have come back, your Harvest Gathering. Some of those were test scents that failed. Some of them were repackages or repackages with a twist of other scents over the years. Nevertheless, put all together, it was a really nice, cohesive collection. Beautiful art direction. Think of your Napa Valley and Sonoma Coast wine regions in California. Lids that had a Cork and Vine 2015 logo on them and a gold lid. Just really cohesive, a really nice collection. I will say the Black Cherry Merlot in there was the one time that Black Cherry Merlot actually smelled like wine. The Black Cherry Merlot that you have seen ever since then, so any candle that came out post the Cork and Vine collection in 2015 that's been called Black Cherry Merlot matches the hand soap, which essentially is just your sweet, dark, syrupy, candied black cherry. Not a real wine to it, maybe just a little bit of fruitiness in the background. However, that original Black Cherry Merlot candle in the Cork and Vine collection truly smelled the most like wine that I've ever smelled in home fragrance in candle form. It was really, really nice, closely, close to authentic. I loved it. 
And of course it was not successful enough and they went just with a straight up kind of black cherry cough syrup. I kind of think of it as. People love it, that's fine. If you do, great, I'm glad. Then the other one that was so, so popular that I love the most was Wine Cellar. That label was really nice. This label, I didn't, I can't, this little kind of like, I don't know, Fleur de Lis or wrought iron with the, like the wine bottles. It's like this somewhat Parisian, but also like Tuscan-esque. I, I, I just don't, it's not for me. It's a little cartoony. I, I'm not a fan, whatever, that's fine. They could have brought out the Cork and Vine collection label because with the Insta Vault, they tend to bring back the original label most of the time. And for whatever reason, they did not for, for this one. Now, Wine Cellar is not specifically perfectly wine scented the way that the Black Tree Merlot of Cork and Vine 2015 was. It is wine, but it's more so the cellar. So it's going to be a bit more evoking sort of that dark, damp wood and fruit and all of the notes that can come with being in a wine cellar and drinking some deep red wine. All they give us are mulled apples, fresh fig, and cedar wood, which not very much. There is more going on in here. In 2015, the wine cellar candle was described as cedar wood, red fruit, and precious saffron. I love saffron in fine fragrance. It's it's really up there with some of the, my favorite notes, as is cedar wood, in fact. So you compare that, but add in some apples, some fig. They include the cedar wood here, but they kind of, quite frankly, dumbed it down a bit. Whatever, that's fine. The fragrance is still the same. It is warm, it is round, it's almost I got a little bit of a medicinal edge to it, which I think actually is from kind of saffron, which can sometimes come off as almost a little rubbery or like a dried hay fragrance. Cedarwood, which is going to be resinous, dark, warm, a little bit spicy. Red fruits are going to be, of course, your grapes, but also some dark berries, maybe a little bit of dried fruit, a dark cherry, a dark raspberry, some boysenberry, blackberry, all of your dark, dark red fruits. Certainly a bit of apple as well and wine-like. Not an exact, couldn't say, oh, this is a Cabernet Sauvignon or, or something like that. It really just is an elevated, sophisticated fragrance that I love. Sorry for taking so long on Wine Cellar. Probably, of course, could do an in-depth comparison review on this one. Maybe I will, let me know if you're interested, but I just really love it. About a couple of these actually, because who knows if and when it'll ever be back. Moving along, we'll go a little faster now. French Baguette, established 2012. This was not the original label. This was originally just released in White Barn Core packaging, which was very similar to the Slack & Co packaging in 2012 kind of on the tail end of the Slack & Co partnership with Bath & Body Works. And it was just in the fall collection, doing its thing. I, I believe it went wide then. I don't think it was super popular. Came back in Candle Day, I wanna say, was it 2018, I think, maybe 19, in this packaging. Uh, maybe one other time in a French collection before then, but really didn't, from 2012 to 19, it came back two or three times, but it is so wildly authentic. I bought it, you know, I, I bought it in 2012. I think I bought it Candle Day a few years back when they, they brought it back in the vault releases. And I bought one this year. Notes, slow rising dough, crispy crust, a pat of butter. It really is the most surprisingly authentic, crusty French bread. It doesn't smell like dough. It doesn't smell super yeasty even. Sometimes they'll do like donuts, like the campfire donuts and things that kind of do have a, a yeasty edge to them. This truly, Smells like you have a paper bag with the crusty, slightly floured French baguette, squishy, chewy, very crusty. It is risen and kneaded and risen multiple times and twisted and turned and probably for a day or two to make a true French baguette. And it just smells so much like it. I rarely burn it only because I always think, man, I, I, will, I love the scent. Who wouldn't want fresh baked bread in, in their house, the scent of that? But yet I've never felt a time where I'm like, I want to light that candle. So I have a couple of times. I believe someday I will. I just, I can't pass it up because it's so authentic. Butter, nah, not so much. Just a little hint of maybe sea salt in there, some French sea salt. Delicious. Love this. Super strange. So directly, it's not gourmand. It's like an authentic port of a baguette. So strange, but kind of novelty in that sense. Uh, it would be interesting to do a more conceptual, you know, a little bit of baking bread, but something a little bit more, I don't know, a, a warm kitchen scent that has French baguette with something else added to it. Maybe their blends collection, they could do something along the lines of French baguette. Could add like a, a really nice, like a, a berries and cream, or just like a deep pres apricot preserves with French baguette. Mm, there's some good, <laughs> there's some good stuff that could work for that. So I'd like to see them kind of take that and, and explore it a little bit. So that's all I got from the Insta Vault collection. Now let's go to a couple of online exclusives. These maybe weren't specifically for Candle Day. I think they were more like closer to Black Friday at late November. Nevertheless, online exclusive collection. There were, I believe, four of them. I have these two. There was also Winter White Woods and White Eucalyptus and Sage. 
kind of an easy pass for me on those. But I did purchase two. First one being Fresh Winter Air. So this scent has been coming out for a couple of years. Usually I believe it is called Fresh Winter Air, although I know and someone's gonna comment and, and remind me because I always forget there was another name for this a couple of years back. Totally skipped it, missed it, didn't realize it. However, last year I purchased it when it was in the Giving Thanks collection, Fresh Winter Air. I actually have a review of that here. One of my early videos when I relaunched Touch Fire Twice in December of 2021. And for me, this is very similar to one of my old favorites, Snowed In, which was a White Barn, Slacken & Co era scent. Just incredible, resinous, deep, sappy, syrupy, a bit woody. I love Snowed In. You really, I light it when I'm snowed in. I have so little of it left that now it's only, if there's a snowstorm, okay, I'm gonna light that for a couple of hours. Happily, Fresh Winter Air is not exactly the same, but it is very, very close to it. Notes on Fresh Winter Air, they say zesty citrus, fresh peppermint, and cold evergreen. The notes on the original Snowed In said fresh juniper, sugared sap, and sage. Perfect description. It is bright, the fresh winter air. I love a conceptual, you know I love a conceptual. And it is fresh. It's not quite minty or zesty citrus to me, though I think I do believe that that's what's in there to give sort of that whoosh feeling. And not quite balsam or spruce. I do think juniper, which is a bit fresher, uh, maybe a little earthy, but but not quite as green, a little more earthy perhaps, but still that kind of astringency edge to it. And that sugared sap and just a green, soft, velvety sage with again, that sappy, sugary, sweet resin. Love it, love this. Highly recommend it if you want something that is an outdoor conceptual evergreen tree scent, doesn't scream holiday, very much all winter. Uh, I just, I think this is a really great one. Highly recommend that one. Then we bounce on over to one that I am not certain if it's repackaged. I'd have to depend on Kent of the Candle Channel to give the full story on this one. Blush Poinsettia, Blush Poinsettia, Blush Poinsettia, whatever you want to call it, this is the candle. I've always, I grew up saying Poinsettia, though now I think I usually say Poinsettia. You know, not Setia necessarily, but Poinsett, Poinsettia, whatever. Blush Poinsettia. Notes in this one, Rose Petals, Green Ivy, and Sweet Marshmallow. Now this is not a winter candle. Uh, poinsettias don't have a scent to them that I'm aware of, unless you distill their essence to get something out of them that doesn't come out, you know, from the bud when you smell it. It is a sweet rose to a, to a certain extent. This could lean, certainly spring, but it could also be sort of a, you know, maybe a transitional like Valentine's scent for sure with another name. In fact, maybe again, it has over the years had different names. It's not as much sweetness like say lavender marshmallow, lavender macaron. Not quite the same type for me, although maybe it's related to it, but it's not quite as ooey gooey marshmallow. They call that out sweet marshmallow, but certainly there is a sweetness in there that is not just the powdery sweetness of the rose. But you get sort of, I feel a dewy kind of rain kissed rose a bit. So it's somewhat fresh. It's not particularly powdery, maybe a little powder from the marshmallow almost. And what do they say, green, green ivy? So green ivy is gonna bring some almost herbaceous, almost astringent, bright freshness to it. I wouldn't call this super authentic in the sense of, you know, an actual outdoor botanical because of the sweetness, almost that kind of gourmand marshmallow added to it. But it doesn't go foodie like your pink petal tea cake with literally a petit four or a sponge cake added to it. Rose forward, primarily rose. It's very pretty. I like it a lot. It's a little bit different and this could be a good, you know, mid late winter, something fresh, almost early spring when you just want a 180 from all the, the heavy, spicy, evergreen, gourmand bakeries that you've been doing for the past couple of months. Moving along, let's go to one of my all-time favorites, Cranberry Pebbleine. It first came out, I want to say it was 2010, and it was, if I remember correctly, it was a trio of scents. They used to just kind of be super random with some launches. Uh, this was not even test. It was Cranberry Pebbleine, Hot Buttered Rum, and Vanilla Spice. Hot Buttered Rum has come out a million times since then. Vanilla Spice never came back and is in my top three Winter Slack and Eco Sense. I've talked about it ad nauseum before. Incredible, would love to see Vanilla Spice come back. I won't get into that to make this video a million years long, but it also came out with Cranberry Perbellini. And for me, this is the perfect, sparkling, effervescent New Year's celebratory candle. For me, forget Champagne Toast, forget your Peach Bellinis. Sorry, AZ for Angela, I know you'll, you 
had a peach bellinis, but, <laughs> and I loved it at one time, but for me, creme perbellini really takes it over. Notes on this one, fizzy pear nectar, sparkling red cranberries, lush apricot, and tart black currant. They're leaving out sort of the actual, they say the pear nectar. There's definitely sort of a sparkling wine Prosecco note in here. I, this one is, for me, it is sweet, but it is so refreshing. The way that if you're eating something spicy or something fatty and you take a sip of Prosecco or champagne, any sort of acidic, sparkling white wine, it just cleanses your palate. This cleanses the palate of all, as I said with the Blush Point Sedia, cleanses your palate of everything you've been burning from October through December. It's celebratory, it's bright, it's festive, it's fruity, but it still is very winter with the, the pear, which I said in my 12 Days of Candles videos, can lean very winter, not just, you know, warming baking spices of fall. Cranberries, winter. Apricot oftentimes is winter, it can be year round, but it can also be a sort of like the dried apricot that appears in winter dishes. Uh, and of course, black currant. Black currant is not going to be the black currant that you think. It's going to be adding a, almost like a animalic, tart, sometimes green, astringent edge to fragrance. And that might be giving you a little bit of that background of this where it just feels almost a bit icy and outdoors. I just love Creme Perbellini. I think it is such an authentic, beautiful blend. People sleep on it. I think folks are just whatever about it. But when it comes to any effervescent at Bath & Body Works, this is for me, number one, far and away. All right, getting into the last three here, I'll just do one quickie that was just kind of out of nowhere. Not out of nowhere. This came out earlier this fall. You had a collection of kind of a mixed bag of a couple of returning favorites, a couple of newbies. The Sweet Whiskey was in here, Juniper and Gin. I did a review on Sweet Whiskey and Juniper and Gin. You can check that out here if you want, in-depth sniffing comparison review. Actually crushed up and showed true dried juniper berries, which they say are in here, which don't entirely get. But it was sort of a, a one pour collection where it came out with the other four or five fragrances. I don't think it came in more than one or two shipments. It wasn't kind of the all season long thing. It was maybe a floor set, it was there and then gone. So when I saw one of these, I liked it enough. I was like, let me buy it. Notes on this one, juniper berries, chilled gin, and freshly squeezed lime. Sniffing this, I again, I, I, I refer back to the in-depth sniffing comparison review I did on this, but there's perhaps a little bit of mm, almost a kind of a sandalwood softness, an aquatic vibe, kind of almost a lemongrass to this for me, like a dirty natural lemon, like the juice and almost the pith of a lemon. Juniper berries, for sure, you've got some of that earthiness, that almost pine edge that juniper gives you. But this is softer than just gin. I mean, because lime with juniper berries and gin, so gin and lime, you know, like a, a gin ricky <laughs> with some sugar, that's not what this smells like. You don't smell, or I don't smell lime in here. Maybe like a sparkling yuzu citrus zest, but not lime. Unless it's like kefir lime leaves. Really pretty. Great for spring, I think. Probably transition from winter into spring. I didn't burn my first one a whole lot, so I'll probably burn that one and this one as we get deeper throughout the winter season. And then our last two here. We have Linen and Lavender, part of the Neutrals collection. This is not new. I think it's come out a couple of times. I actually, getting my nose in this, think it's probably a repackage. Please confirm if anyone, you know, is, is familiar of maybe just the French Lavender from, you know, 2014 that came back off and on over the past eight years. The notes on this one are not on the bottom. I actually kind of like the, the solid jar color here. Notes on the front, of course, crisp linen, lavender sea salt, and fresh air breeze. Neutrals collection seems to be here to stay. I think it works. I kind of the chalky milky pastels. I don't mind them. Same thing with this creamy lid. New, truly is neutral. The label is fine. I, I There's some good scents that are thrown in here, so I'm, I'm happy if they kind of keep this almost like an ongoing to the side of the White Barn Core collection. This is just straightforward, super outdoor powdery lavender scent. So that's where I think where the linen comes in. Now linen actually sometimes is expressed using certain tiny little blue flowers that are the kind of scent that we think of with linen oftentimes when it's you know it's just a material that doesn't have an, its own scent but this one in specifically i think is more so conceptual in that it's a powdery soft non-herbal non-astringent though you're always gonna have a little bit of astringency with lavender version of lavender more so the lavender blossoms and a huge field of them let's you know french 
provincial countryside with these fields of lavender flowers fully bloomed. Maybe you are at a, a countryside home and you've got some, some sheets or some shirts out to dry on the line going along with the lavender through the air. And that's what linen and lavender evokes. It's sunny, bright. They say sea salt, fresh air breeze, crisp linen. Yeah, that all tracks. Just a really nice, straightforward, powdery, soft, intense lavender. So happy with that one. And then finally, this one, kind of ugly packaging for what this kettle is, which is white tea and jasmine. Just kind of a, a muddy orange, more like a spiced pumpkin and patchouli. For something that's a white tea and jasmine, and it could have got a little different, but packaging obviously is not the primary reason we're purchasing these. Notes on this one, crisp white tea, soft jasmine petals, and fresh bergamot. For me, this, I said this because this is not the first time I purchased this one, uh, though I have not yet burned the first one. I just wanted to grab this because it seemed like there weren't many, kind of was along the lines of the juniper and gin where I think it was one or two pours and not sure if we'll see this come, you know, floor sets into the new year after some annual sale. This is exceedingly close to one of my favorites, white tea and ginger. Body Cry item from, what, early 2000s. Came out pretty frequently through some annual sales through the mid, you know, 2010s, but it hasn't come around for a couple of years. Was in home fragrance form in maybe 2015 or 16. A couple of times they did pours on those candles. I really enjoy it. It's very spa. It's very settling. It's not the invigorating sort of ginger that you get in orange ginger. It is truly a relaxing, grounding, a bit uplifting, spa-like experience. I love tea scents. This is a, a clean, light white tea, not super stringent, not green, not aged dark black. It really is just that fresh, young, bright tea. Uh, jasmine is in a lot of teas, so that also can work for that calming, meditative sort of spa scent. I think this is, if not white tea and ginger, a small tweak to it. One note added or removed, that's fine. It really gives me mostly the same vibe. Soft, not, the, the, the jasmine is very dried background edible. It's not the heady, bright white jasmine that sometimes you get. Just really, really pretty. Great spring scent. Random that came out now. Maybe they did it for gifting, not sure. However, that <laughs> finishes off the eight here. I will say I did purchase a couple from the hibernation station. I believe they're calling it collections. There was the leather, there was the fabric. I purchased the fresh coconut and cotton, as well as the incredible pistachio and toasted vanilla. And then in the hibernation station leather, I purchased that ginger lime twist, the afternoon rainfall, and the leather and rose. Excited about those. I'll do other videos on those, whether it's a haul or in-depth snippet comparison reviews on those. Not yet sure. I'd love to hear what you want to see first, because I got to keep these going as I'm doing the 12 Days of Candles videos throughout the month of December as well. Let me know what you purchased from these, what you missed out on, what you want to get, what you didn't get, what you did, whatever. We'd love to hear it. And until next time, take care.